than silver or gold. I'd rather be his than have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or lands. I'd rather be led by his nail-pierced hand than to be the king of a vast domain or be held in sin's dread sway. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. I'd rather have Jesus than men's applause. I'd rather be faithful to his dear cause. I'd rather have Jesus than world wide fame I'd rather be true to his holy name than to be the king of a vast domain or be held in sin's dread sway I'd rather have Jesus than Anything this world affords today. He's fairer than lilies of rarest bloom. He's sweeter than honey from out the comb. He's all that my hungry spirit needs. I'd rather have Jesus and let him lead than to be the king of a vast domain or be held in sin's dread sway. than anything this world affords today.
was your foe, still your love far from me. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all. So kind to me Oh, the overwhelming Never-ending Reckless love of God Oh, it chases me down Fights till I'm found Please the 99 I couldn't earn it I don't deserve it Still you give yourself Thanks be to God and praise him for all of his graces and mercies and every good thing that he gives all of us. Uh, welcome again today, Wes. We just discussed this week nine of this uh, temporary craziness here. Here we go. We we're hoping it was going to be a week or two. And here we are on May the 17th, way down the road. Time flies when you're uh, doing things you're not comfortable with. <laughs> if you're having a good time or if you're just kind of acting like you're having a good time. That's right. Uh, but welcome to worship today. Uh, the Sunday after Mother's Day, two Sundays before Pentecost, we're having, 
I'm having a hard time not being too excited. I'm an excitable boy anyway, always have been, I presume always will be. But talking about the Holy Spirit always really winds me up. Um, I, I think naturally, I think for the experiences I've had with the Holy Spirit of my life, seeing as how the Holy Spirit has blessed, enabled, in, inflamed both individuals and churches, you can tell when the Holy Spirit's not there. And boy, can you tell when it is. Uh, so this conversation on the Holy Spirit today has me pretty wound up. So we're going to pray that Dane can calm down just a little bit, come off of his Yankee speak, speak a little bit slower <laughs> today, and uh, so everyone can hear and understand what we're talking about. Some great stuff today. Jesus promises us more, 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 more. Our culture, our world, our generation should be all about this. This, this offering that Jesus has, and of course it's conditional, right? It, it, everything has conditions to it. Jesus offers us wonderful, wonderful, beautiful things. Uh, and I can't wait to get to that topic. Jesus promises you life and life eternal. And I pray that uh, that is already yours or you're well on your way to working, working towards that. I uh, appreciate the opening music, glorious, upbeat, as always, powerful. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And uh, could you open us in prayer? Absolutely. Lord, what a special day this is. A day when we're in your house and you're in ours. So be with our time this morning as we worship, as we pray, as we yes, sing, Lord. as we maybe yes, we, we cry a little, as we connect with you, yes, maybe in a new and fresh way this morning. Mm -hmm. Be with our time, be with our talents and our gifts as we glorify you with them. Amen. Amen. Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to the children's moment on this beautiful Sunday. Hope everyone has had a great weekend. Do you believe in things that you can't see? Well, some things we do. What do I have here? This is a fan. What does a fan do? Yes, it cools us down. It blows air on us if we're hot. I'm going to turn this fan on, and the only way you know this fan is working, because you're not here, is because I put these streamers on it. So Miss Lisa's going to turn it on. Look at that. Ah, uh, if I put it on me, it's going to blow my hair. It's going to make me feel better, because the air is coming out, but you cannot see that air. But it is very comforting, especially in our hot Georgia summers, to know that that air can blow on us and keep air circulating. Did you know that this, is, this reminds me of a story in the Bible about when Jesus ascended into heaven, he left us a nice promise. And that promise was is that he is going to be our comforter. And just like this fan gives us comfort when we're hot, Jesus is our comforter. And I think that's where the word comforter comes from when, when we think about our bedspread or a fuzzy blanket or a stuffed animal that you, that you love. Those things give us peace and give us comfort and make us feel better. And Jesus wants us to remember that he has brought his comfort to us. So as we're ending up our school year, through this odd little time that we've had and we're missing each other at church and we don't get to see each other and you don't get to sit here on the, the uh, steps with Miss Lisa, you don't get to feel the fan, and, but you get to see it, I want you to remember that Jesus is our com comforter and he wraps his arms around us just like your, your favorite teddy bear, your favorite blanket, even though you can see those things. You can't see the Holy Spirit that Jesus has sent down for us. But just remember, he's right there with you all the time. So I hope you have a great week. And just remember that Jesus is your comforter. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we do thank you for your love. And we thank you for our First Methodist children and all the things they're having to go through right now. We pray that you would continue to bless them continue to let them know that your arms are around them and that you are their special comforter. Pray that you'd keep them safe until we meet again. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Thank you so much, Lisa. Boy, you tell about someone that's risen to the occasion. Lisa's doing some fantastic. Uh, everyone should be listening to uh, these children moments that Lisa is putting out on Facebook. And I guess some of them are on YouTube even maybe. Uh, 
she, she is, I, I mean, God's word, God's spirit is, is working and speaking to Lisa today. Something special is going to happen in our service today. Why don't you alert the folks to that? Yeah, it's, um, it's been tough for our seniors in high school. You've seen and heard from them uh, on Facebook the last few weeks. Uh, we gave our love scholarships, at least the first installment mm -hmm. to them last week as well. And uh, Don Young, as she does every year, has put together a slideshow uh, of our seniors from birth all the way through graduation pictures. And so you're going to see that <laughs> this morning. So uh, we want to thank Dawn for that. Thank you for the parents you, uh, for, for helping get those pictures together. And then maybe, maybe Sunday night, tonight, uh, we'll do something special for them as well. Be on the lookout for some more information about that. But something special for our seniors later in the day. Yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you. So be sure you hang in and watch that. Uh, you're not going to want to miss that. I, I, I believe I'm right. I think Dawn has done this every year that we've been here every year that I've been here. I, I believe Dawn has, has efforted uh, to do this and, and Dawn does a great job. And uh, she and Eddie do so much for this church. Most powerful thing to do for this church is they pray for the ministry of this church. And, and that's the most powerful thing that anyone, any of us can possibly do. I'm going to read a little bit from John 14. And even though this is prior in time to post crucifixion, post Resurrection, where we've been for the last several weeks. This, this is weeks, months before Jesus' triumphal entry. Weeks, months before his being crucified, being risen from the dead. Before the meeting with the gentleman on the road to Emmaus. Before Jesus comes into the room, not once but twice to the disciples in Jerusalem. Before he goes to meet them by the Sea of Galilee. But topically, it, it, it just hand in glove here. This last week was about Peter and the reinstatement of a relationship. And the challenge was, and I hope we're not through doing this. I'm still working on mine. Is for us to restore, at least do our part, to restore a relationship with someone. This is all about relationship today. Jesus is offering us today. For all who would be his disciples. We had an interesting conversation about. Maybe being too far away and yet wanting to be part of the crowd. Being part of the crowd and not part of the inner circle. Uh, but Jesus is offering to his disciples today something that is otherworldly. Truly it is. Something that, that is beyond conception, that is beyond belief. And without introing it too much, I, I want to read the text first. John, John 14, verses 15 through 19. Um, let's just read the text. Let, let, let's allow the text... The power of this moment kick us off this week. And in my Bible, this section is labeled, Jesus promises us. Jesus promises the Holy Spirit. If you have the Holy Spirit, you know it. If you have the Holy Spirit, you're showing it. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, it is something unlike you would never have dreamed that your life can be. You want it? Jesus is promising it to us. Jesus begins out like this, and this is a propositional. It's called a propositional command, a propositional covenant. Jesus says, if you love me, he'd ask Peter three times, do you love me? It's, it's sort of a dovetail, though it's earlier in time. Do you love me? Yes. Do you love me? Yes. Do you love me? Yes. Jesus begins today, if you love me, keep my commands. I'm going to talk about this. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. From the moment you receive the advocate, the Holy Spirit, forever. The Spirit of truth. Uh, truth tellers, uh, truth speakers, uh, they're filled with the Holy Spirit. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. It's foolishness, it's insanity. But you know him, for he lives with you, step further, and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. You will experience me. You will hear me. You will follow me. You, you will know me. Because I live, you will live also. Powerful word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Uh, Lord, 
the power, the presence, the truth of the Holy Spirit is, is, is Lord, something that, that the church, Lord, forgive us as a church. Lord, forgive us as a, as, as a universal Christian church, Lord. Forgive us as the United Methodist Church, Lord, when, when, when we negate, Lord, when we fear, when we run from, when you do not allow, invite, encourage, teach, and preach the Holy Spirit being such a necessary component to our walk in our relationship with you. May our words, Lord, be accurate and be true and encourage at least one, if not more, to come to asking for, inviting, accepting, and living with the Holy Spirit. In Christ Jesus' holy name. Amen, amen, amen. If you love me. This is another sermon for another day. I, I've spoken to this over and over and over again. It, it, it bears repeating. If you love the Father, you will come to know the Father. If you don't care to know the Father, then, then that shows. If you, love me, if you love me, Jesus says, keep my commands. We absolutely cannot know what Jesus' commands are, and some will flee from commands. When I was a young boy, whatever I was told to do was best and as quickly as I could. I did just the opposite. When we're children, we're expected to act like children. When we're adults, we're expected to act like adults. By and large today, not, not entirely. I was told to do something today, and I didn't do it. But uh, by and large... As adults, when we're told to do something, we, if it's a voice of authority, a voice of wisdom, we know to do it. If my God and my Father, Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, tells me to do something, buddy, for the best of my ability, I'm on it. I'm on it. I, I don't want to miss it. Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commands. And do I need to go into how, how we play games with that? First of all, we have to know God's word. God's word, God's word is primary. God, God's word is everything. Word is life, word is truth. Jesus says, if you love me, you will know what I say. And you'll keep my commands. And if you do this, if you love me enough to know what I say and to obey what I, not to make excuse, but to follow my commands, that I will ask and the Father is going to give you the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. It is one thing, and, and I did this for decades. I, 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 I did this for years. It is one thing to be a Christian. I was born to a Christian family. I'm a Christian. Uh, I'm in a Christian part of the world. The Southeast is still the Bible Belt as much as it's ever going to be. And, and so I'm a Christian. Uh, I, I go to church. I'm a Christian. I'm a member of a church. I'm a Christian. I, I understand all that. I'm there. I've been that. I, I, I'm on that. But what Jesus is offering us today in this beautiful, wonderful, full of opportunity, full of gifts life, in this crazy life, where any and every day, all bets are off, no matter how we've invested our lives in education or people or situations, in, in any way, it can all go awry at any moment, it is going awry right now in almost every possible way. Jesus says, if, if you love me and you will come to know what I say and you'll obey what I say. If, if, if you will do this, are you there? First, are you there? Because Jesus would have you come to that point. So loving Jesus enough to know what his words, what his words of truth, and Jesus only wants to give us truth in life. Nothing else. Jesus isn't here to jerk us around. Other people in the world do that for us. Jesus is not going to do that. If you love me enough to know what I say and as best as we are able, with no excuse making, do what Jesus calls for us to do and stop doing what he calls for us to stop doing. Jesus says, I am going to send God to be with you. The Holy Spirit is not only going to walk beside you, but is going to live in you. You, you talk about the ultimate tour guide through this life. Someone is going to make sure, help you live inside of you. Some people call it a conscience and, and, and I guess that's a weak, kind of a strange way to talk about the Holy Spirit. How have you heard of or felt been in relationship with the Holy Spirit in, in your life today, maybe? Yeah, I mean, it, definitely the, the mediator, the counselor, those words. I don't, I don't like conscience because, I mean, I can tell myself some pretty bad things. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah. so I, sometimes I find myself, is that, a, is that a Holy Spirit thought or is it a West thought? 
And I have to, if I have to even ask that question, it's probably a West thought. So it, leaning, leaning on that guidance, but most of the time, it's not what happens up here. It's what we interpret when we read this. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the Holy Spirit nudging us and guiding us through his word. It's not just making it up as we go, uh, but it's having that, it's having that relationship. And, and, and I think in order to have that relationship, we have to define what that relationship is Absolutely. for us. Absolutely. Is it in, in a book Kyle Eilerman wrote several years ago, and we've read it, but it's, they have, it's called the DTR moment, the defining the relationship mm -hmm. moment. Uh, are you a fan of, of Jesus? Are you a Fairweather fan? Uh, are you, uh, I know we've got Alabama people, but everyone is on the Alabama train <laughs> because they are just winning and winning and winning. So everyone's got the apparel, everybody's got the stickers because they're doing well. Uh, or, or are you a follower? Are you a Braves fan in the 80s? In the early 90s, are you there thick and thin? Are you following Jesus? But I, in order to have the Holy Spirit, we have to define our relationship with God. Absolutely. Absolutely we do. It, it's either, are, are, are you an ultimate insider or, or, or are you somewhere, even if in, the, in close proximity outside? Uh, Jesus is offering us in our lives. I mess up multiple times every day just because we're human. All of us, the best of us cannot help but do that. Jesus promises us that he will not only be around us, he will not only be protecting us, around us, above us, behind us, below us, but Jesus promises us, God and the Holy Spirit, I will come and live inside of you to guide you through this crazy, crazy life. I will be there every step of the way. And it's different for all of us so that this life will be as good and as sure, as rich, the best that it can be for all of us, different for all of us as good as this life can be in guiding us, because hear what Jesus says. He will not only live with you, he will live in you. And he said, and because I live, you will live also. Because I've been risen from the dead and I now have eternal life because I have this eternal life, the Holy Spirit will come live inside you and be prepping you, be guiding you to go through heaven's gates. Not on your own, not just what a preacher says, on radio, TV, Facebook, YouTube, not just all those guys, and now we're a couple of those guys. Not that, but the Holy Spirit is going to live in you and guide you every step of the way. It, it is really a shame to the extent, not our Pentecostal brothers and sisters, to a lesser extent, not our charismatic brothers and sisters. They're, they're pretty much way on and all about the Holy Spirit. Much of the mainline denominational churches are and have been for hundreds of years pretty worried about the Holy Spirit, uh, a little afraid of the Holy Spirit, because it takes the human realm, the human activity, the human thought out of it. Uh, God, forgive us for that. Here's what the Holy Spirit will do. The Holy Spirit, and this just goes on in... In chapter 14, I'm going to go a little bit in, 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 into 15. Jesus says, I have spoken all of this so that the advocate, the Holy Spirit, will come upon you. The Holy Spirit is going to teach you. The Holy Spirit is going to help you learn. Not judgmentally. But whenever someone goes into a Bible study or they don't go to Bible study, they say, you know what? I just can't understand this book. I'm, I mean, I don't read it. Uh, I, I have the New English version. I have all these versions. I have, I have the good news, and I just can't understand this. I don't know. Ask the Holy Spirit to come into your life to come into you. Set the condition up of loving Jesus enough to know what Jesus says, and then as best as we're able to, to follow those commands. And Jesus says, the Holy Spirit will teach you, will enlighten you, will open mental and spiritual doorways for you. The Holy Spirit will remind you whatever, because Jesus told these disciples this months before he died and that they, and they totally forgot it. He was almost telling him, you're going to forget all about this. But when the Holy Spirit comes on the day of Pentecost, it's going to come back. Oh, Jesus talk to us about this. So whatever is important and pertinent to our life, to our walk towards eternity with God and Jesus Christ, Jesus says the Holy Spirit is not only going to teach you, but is going to remind you and is going to bring back things to you. Holy Spirit is going to bring you peace. The Holy Spirit are going to give you hearts that are not troubled. How many of us today, how many of us today would love to have hearts that are not troubled? Jesus is telling us that if the Holy Spirit lives inside of us, we have a sense of peace. We may be freaked out about things. It's a crazy world. 
We, we have no idea when this COVID thing is going to back off, go away, become something different. We, we don't know. But Jesus says, you'll have a sense of peace and you will not be troubled and you will not be afraid over this. Because, and here's the powerful one, and I'd love for you to speak to this. Because the prince of this world, the devil, demonic forces, who wants us to be scared to death and afraid, the devil wants us to stop living. God put us on this earth to live and to, and to live abundantly. And now this COVID is, is allowing darkness into the world. In fact, it says right here, you will no longer walk in darkness with the evil one, that the prince of this world will no longer have hold of you if the Holy, once the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. Mm -hmm. And right now, there's some, there's some scared people out there. The prince of darkness is covering them. They're being guided uh, by fear instead of being guided by the truth. Absolutely. And the advocate, the counselor, the Holy Spirit is the one that's going to help, uh, help us navigate those waters based on not what People say, well, that's my truth. Well, that's, that's their truth. It's, it's either truth or it's not. Yeah. It's either it's fake or it's not. Yeah. So being guided by the truth and having the Holy Spirit to reveal himself to you through the scripture and guiding yourself through that and ultimately brings Jesus glory because we have this right relationship with him. But it's, it's scary because... If we are not in tune to what scripture says, we are easily manipulated to do anything and everything Listen. that other people can do. And people are very easily, um, they easily can convict other people. I can't believe they did that. I can't, how would he do that? Well, we are all one step away mm -hmm. from making life-changing decisions that can completely wreck our world if we are not being guided by the <clears throat> Holy Spirit and allowing his truth to reveal himself to us. Amen. And what a powerful, life-filled decision. And we have to make a decision to do it. To love Jesus enough to know what he says, to as best as we can obey, follow, work towards being holy enough to allow Jesus to send us the Holy Spirit. What a life it is to suddenly be walking in the Spirit. Not, not being rolling in the aisles, handling snakes, though we saw that the other day over here. Uh, <laughs> It was a black snake by the tail. But, uh, I mean, just for the Holy Spirit to be powerful in our lives. I think people are intimidated by the rules. They think that there's so many things they have to follow. And there's just so many things. There's no way I can do that. So I'm not even going to try. The best example I've heard is, you know, when you get a dog or puppy, you put a fence in your backyard so the dog can live inside the fence. Not to punish the dog. Not to make it not grow or not thrive. But it's to protect so God puts parameters, he puts commands, he puts not rules, but just some life choices that we have to adhere to mm -hmm. for our own safety. And when we're inside that fence, we could leave, live freely, yeah. but know that he's protecting us. Amen. 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 And that's a great segue into just real quick, uh, I'm going to hit on a, a, a powerful part of a chapter, part of Ephesians 4, where Paul talks about the Holy Spirit. And there's a lot of conversation about the Holy Spirit. It isn't just Jesus talks about the Holy Spirit. The men, the disciples, the generations after Jesus, as they experienced the Holy Spirit, they, they, they wrote broadly upon it. But just, but just hear these points. Paul says this in Ephesians 4, chapter 17. Do you want God to really guide you in this life? Not just hit or miss, not just come or go. Oh, I come to church every once in a while just to get to my hit of God. No, no, no. For, for God and Jesus Christ to live with you and to walk with you, to be inside of you, God and you. I want Jesus inside me. I, I, Dane needs Jesus inside the Holy Spirit. So Paul says this. So I tell you this and I insist upon, and, and Paul likes to insist on a lot of things, that in the Lord, this is how you receive the Holy Spirit. You must no longer live as the Gentiles do, as those living in darkness, as those that don't believe, as those who refuse to believe, are, are, are those that are always constant argument and tearing God's word to shreds. Paul says, I insist upon this, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do. Paul says they're living in futility. They're living in darkness. They are separated from God by their thoughts and by their actions. He says they have lost themselves. They're, they're lost to themselves, and, and, and he speaks about things we won't go into greatly, to sensuality, as our current culture lost itself to sensuality, every kind of impurity and full of greed. In other words, almost every negative aspect of humanity that you can imagine, Paul says you cannot live as Gentiles, but you must live in the truth. 
I'm glad you mentioned truth because Herod asked, what's truth? Because he had his own truths. He had all these truths. These truths came from everywhere. Every part of the Roman Empire had its own, its own version of truth. Jesus says, my word is truth. Jesus says, I am truth. Jesus says, the Father is truth and life. This, this, this is the only truth that can take us through this life in the best possible manner. It's the only truth that can grant us life eternal. Because Paul says that if you will live not as the Gentiles, not in darkness, and there's plenty of that mess going on, yeah? If you will live in truth, you will be created like God wants you. You will be a new person. You will be recreated like God in righteousness and in holiness. This is how we receive the Holy Spirit. To position, don't be perfect. What kind of, man, I'm, I've already messed up three or four times a day. But, but to allow the Holy Spirit to come over our lives and to live with us and dwell with us, that's how we receive the Holy Spirit. And to, to couple with that, Luke 9, 23, it doesn't say to pick up your cross and just admire him. <laughs> but we've got to pick up our cross and, and follow. And so are we, are we following? Because if we're followers, I wrote this down earlier because it's powerful. If we're followers, we understand that there's no forgiveness without repentance. Mm -hmm. We understand there's no salvation without surrender. We understand there's no life without death. And there is no believing without following. So we take up our cross and follow, not stay on the sidelines and watch him do it. Amen. Amen. Another sermon for another day. What a powerful point. Jesus came down off the cross to be resurrected and born again. And now is God in heaven. We have to come down. We, we cannot carry our cross as some kind of an icon or some kind of a symbol. We have to come down off the cross to live. We, we, we have to get off the cross. This is how not to receive the Holy Spirit. And Paul gives us real, real quick list. Do not let unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. Paul's saying you will not receive the Holy Spirit if these things are happening with you. That's tough. Do not let unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. I struggle with that. That's tough. That's tough one. Because how many of us think, Lord, forgive me, thoughts towards anything and anything, usually other, other people that are unholy, unwholesome, and then sometimes it just starts to blah, 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 blah. The, that old tongue just, 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 just gets us. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. And here in this, in Ephesians, this, this is how you grieve the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit is around you, if the Holy Spirit is within you, if you don't want to chase the Holy Spirit off, here, here, get rid of all bitterness. Do you know some bitter people in life? Yep. Amen? Mm -hmm. Rage and anger. Anger is one thing. Rage is when you're out of control. Rage is when you need to be locked up mm -hmm. because you are out of control. You can't have the Holy Spirit and be a person that lives by the anger card or, 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 or just rages. It isn't happening. Brawling is like brawling is fighting. It doesn't have to be physical fighting, but brawling is just starting fights. Do we know people who start fights? Slander, slander. Oh my goodness. I don't know I'm gonna go there. Slander, slander, along with every form of malice. I mean, this is, you're working at home to do bad stuff to people. Usually groundless, formless, just because you don't have enough to do. So you're just thinking of ways you, you can mess with other people's lives. You cannot have the Holy Spirit. You will not have the Holy Spirit. If you have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will flee. It's like if you're in your early 20s. I never lived this life because I was in the Marines at 18 years old. But if you're in your early 20s and just out of college and you're living out in town with a, with a bunch of your buddies and the party's never stopped and mama comes to live with you. Mama comes to live with you and you're going to quit partying or mama's going to leave, right? So you can't live that lifestyle and have mama living with you. Or mama's going to move out and one day you're going to end up living in mama's basement. Right? That's not going to... No one holds some talk. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Bitterness, rage, anger, slander, brawling, every form of malice. Here's receive the Holy Spirit. And if we have those things and... and they're habitual or, 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 or we have a weakness in it or, or we just go down these rabbit trails that seem automatic and we just keep doing it over and over and over and over. The Holy Spirit coming around us and living in us, it'll solely pull us out of that ditch. It'll solely pull us out of the darkness and into the light of God's grace and love and mercy and power and life eternal. I think that's the word you said slowly. I, I think the, the, the thought would be 
if we have the Holy Spirit, then all these things are completely off the off the table, nope. and they, and they're not. Yeah. But the but the Holy Spirit will help convict us and will help push us toward that repentance piece yes. where we turn away from it and not go back there. We're all some of us are always going to struggle with anger. We're going to struggle with gossip. We're going to struggle with these, these things. But when we have the counselor or the advocate, the Holy Spirit with us. We are convicted by that, and we're led to ask for forgiveness and then repentance. Um, God said, no, 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 not, not, I know he did it. No, no, this, this way, not this, that, not this, that, not that, this. Here's how you see the Holy Spirit. John Wesley was all about the Holy Spirit, and he was all about life is a process, mm -hmm. a long process. Paul says, be kind. It doesn't take much. It's really easy to do. Mm -hmm. Be kind. Be compassionate to each other. Again, calling around the folks that I'm calling in, in, in this timeout. It's, it's, it's becoming a cacophony. It's, it's, it's becoming over and over and more and more. I miss my church. I miss my class. I miss my people. I miss you. I miss coming back together so much. When we come back, let's be kind to one another. It can begin, I mean, there are words out there right now that are unkind. Don't be that. Don't, don't do that. We, we want the Holy, we want God to be inside of us, leading us to glory. Ask God to help you stop that. Be kind, be compassionate to one another, forgiving each other. This dovetails off last week with something, I hope the challenge is still there. Forgive someone. Verbally tell them that you forgive them. If they deserve it, if they ask for it or not, who cares? God, God calls for us to do that. Follow God's example and walk in the way of love. I guess it's, it's, it's my makeup, it's, it's my call, it's, 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 it's the way that Jesus brought me to, to salvation, probably going for three years to a Pentecostal seminary to earn a doctorate, uh, didn't hurt, but I, I mean, I'm all about the Holy Spirit. This church, the Holy Spirit's here. There's enough of the good, and I have witnessed churches that the Holy Spirit is obviously not in the house. Because just like there's a tipping point in, in our own lives when the Holy Spirit can stand to live in, in the sinful body or not, there's a tipping point in churches where the Spirit says, you know what, I'm, I'm done. Y'all need to resolve some issues for me to be able to live here. We don't want to miss the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is alive and well here. There are so many happy, loving, joy-filled, kind, gracious, just, just want to help us all do the right thing and invite all the people who will come here to a, a powerful one-on-one -on -one relationship with God and Jesus Christ and to ask, to ask, to ask, and to condition ourselves. And it's up to us to condition ourselves to receive God living inside of us. Not running and hiding, but God living here. I mean, what a powerful dynamic this is mm -hmm. for the Holy Spirit to come in our lives. Mm -hmm. It just depends on how far deep people are willing to go. Yeah. How, how uh, you said it, going to the beach and putting on a bathing suit, but just sitting in, standing in the shallows. If you don't swim, why do you put on a bathing suit? Yeah. So how, how why do you far, need it? How far are you willing to go? Uh, there's blessings on the other side of it, mm -hmm. uh, but we have to walk towards it. And, and be guided and everything that we do is guided by, by Holy Scripture. It's not of selfish ambition or financial gain, obviously, but uh, everything is guided by this because we live and breathe and take in Scripture. Amen. So ever so briefly, and, and I was kind of whining, moaning, uh, just talking out loud to us this morning uh, before our lesson here, I, I said, I mean, we could, we could write books on this. Some people have. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I mean, there are volumes of books written on receiving the Holy Spirit. So I just pray, I pray that if you've never considered having the Holy Spirit come over you, live in you, that's not a bad, scary thing. That's the best thing that could possibly ever happen to you. So I'm unworthy. Absolutely. We all are, but Jesus is offering it. So who cares if we're unworthy? We can turn, we can turn. And with the Holy Spirit living in us, God will help us turn to receive the Holy Spirit and live with us for now and forevermore. There are ways to get it. Love Jesus. Know what Jesus says. 
Know what Jesus says. The Holy Spirit will teach you what truth is. I can't know what's truth. There's so much noise out there. Quit, quit listen to the noise. We're worried this morning about a tree coming down over here, and maybe that noise is going to drift in. We don't care about that noise. All we care about the truth of God, the, the sweet, sweet truth of God that's coming from here. We're going to talk about the Holy Spirit again in a different way again next Sunday. And on Pentecost, the 31st, we're going to be, somehow, we're going to be red. I don't, I don't have a red jacket. I think you do. I but do. In fact, I don't even have red pants. But, uh, and, I've read shorts. But we don't have <laughs> shirt, no, no shorts, no shorts. Uh, so some folks wouldn't like that a bit. I pray the Holy Spirit comes upon you today. I hope this Holy Spirit, as a gentle breeze, as, as Lisa had the wonderful example to, the, the gentle breeze washes over you, flows over you, as, oh Lord, oh Lord, please come live inside of me. Lead me, guide me, protect me, inflame me. Help me, help me go towards that point of salvation to where I know I'm going to live forever. May the Holy Spirit come upon you this week. Amen. And amen. Uh, Wes is going to lead us in, into a moment, and, and we thank you. You're amazing. Luckily, our church is full of not just enthusiastic admirers. Yes. They are committed, yes. uh, completely committed followers. So yes. we are, uh, but we're also in a rare, a rare time. A lot of churches aren't, aren't blessed with that. Mm -hmm. But you all have continued time and time again to, to respond. And it's not anything we're asking you. You're responding to the truth. And, and our church is being able to flourish because of it. So now, as we go to our offertory prayer, through your um, online giving, through your checks you mail in, through the ones you bring when you come get your meal, however you do that, thank you for what you do. Uh, and thank you for the givers. Thank you for the families. And, and uh, we invite uh, God in this time uh, to bless all of our efforts. Mm -hmm. Lord, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for those givers. We thank you for the gifts. Continue to it to, for it to flourish this place. Uh, we are not fans. We are not just on the sidelines watching. We are on the field. We are playing, and these gifts help us play. So continue to guide us and direct us as we use these gifts to serve you, not for our own glory, but for yours alone. Your sons may and we pray. Amen. Amen. If I hold on to the memories 
and use them to guide me will you be right here beside me everything Again, we, we thank Don Young for putting together this Fantastic. video for our seniors. And, and you know, those are some special kids uh, who's, uh, they were born uh, around 9-11 and now they're ending wow. uh, their high school career with, with COVID-19. So it's um, a, a difficult time for them. Those that are trying to figure out next steps and when school is going to come back and some of them are playing sports, when's that going to happen? So continue to keep them in prayer. Uh, if you see them around town, maybe tonight, if you see them as you're passing by, wave at them, give them a virtual hug, uh, and just know that, uh, that they need your prayers. So again, we just thank you for those families. And as I've been able to watch them from sixth grade all the way up to seniors in high school, uh, they are part of our family. So from, from our family to yours, yeah. uh, thank you for what you've done for our church. Amen. One of the blessings of both of us being here so long, myself a year longer than you have, uh, is, is watching families grow up, mm. is watching children grow up, uh, coming to grow into young adults, to, to watching this church grow. And, 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 and this church has grown in some powerful, powerful, loving ways. It's going to continue to grow in the years and in the decades and, and generations to come. God's doing a blessed thing here. I pray you consider the Holy Spirit this week. We have a lot of God talk. We have a lot of Jesus talk. But there's a third part of that that's so, so very important for us. And we cannot be more pure. We cannot be more holy. We cannot attempt this walk in life and be what God would have us. We heard to, to be remade, to be reborn. Reborn in what God wants us and wishes for us to be. We don't have a shot at that. Not a prayer without the Holy Spirit living inside of us. I pray this week pray for you this week. You would be bold. Get on your knees. Lift your arms to the heavens and pray for the Holy Spirit to wash over you and our church and our nation and our world. Today, be a Pentecost. Amen. Amen. Have a great week. Have a blessed week. May God's grace be upon you. Amen and amen.